This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. Hello, college football fans, and welcome to the Primetime Podcast. My name is Ricky Whitmer, and as always, I'm joined by the one, the only, Brandon Swanee Swanson. Hey, hey, hey. And Brandon, it's a good thing that... Us for this podcast, for this whole YouTube channel that we're doing, it's a good thing that we don't cover the UFC because did you hear the latest news for the UFC? No, I did not. Because apparently, I hope college football doesn't pick up the same kind of policy because then we wouldn't be able to report the news. There's apparently a reporter at their latest fight. He broke the news about the Brock Lesnar coming back to UFC. Guess what Dana White did? Kicked him out of the event, took away his press credentials, and then said you are banned from coming back to UFC events. So, good thing we can actually report the news and talk about the news for college football. Well, good thing we can actually talk about sports outside of UFC or whatever bullshit that is. Man, I mean, we could talk about Alabama without the worry of Nick Saban breathing down our back saying... You can't talk about that unless I want it out, boys. I'll tell you what, You can't though, talk about if, that. If, if I had Nick Saban breathing down my back right now, I'd <laughs> be like, hey, Nick, this is fucking cool. <laughs> like, he can, he can go ahead and do that anytime he wants to. Never met Nick Saban before. Me neither. I haven't had the opportunity, but I'm sure if he was breathing down my back, eventually we would probably meet. But we've got a jam-packed show for you guys today. Going to be talking some more Baylor football is Jim Globe the right guy to, or Grobe, pardon me, the right guy to right the ship for the Baylor Bears. We're going to be talking about some Jim Harbaugh. Is he good or bad for college football entering year two? And then we're going to pack up the show talking about some Big 12 expansion featuring a Florida team of the Florida variety. That made sense in my head. Didn't make sense coming out. But we're going to be talking about Baylor first and the first thing, Brandon, that I want to bring up with the new hire or the interim hire, I should say, of Jim Grobe is in his opening press conference at McLean Stadium, he, he he said a quote that, and I quote, our goal right now is to steady the ship and be as consistent day to day as we possibly can be, end quote. However, I look at that and I read a separate article today from Brian Chapman on ESPN. Brandon Chapman. And it's a great, it's a great article. Thank you for the correction, by the way. Great article because it's exactly the point that I was thinking when I was kind of watching and listening to some of the comments from Grobe was, how can you say we want to steady the ship but keep the entire coaching staff and all the assistants that were there from when it happened. It just doesn't make sense to me. I agree with you. I, I, I think it's interesting. And and Chapman, who I, I also agree, I think the article is an interesting one. Definitely make sure you you take a read on it. It'll, it's be, on, it's it'll on, be in the description. And it's on ESPN too if you if you don't look at the look in the description. Mm-hmm. But you know, Grobe does talk about things and uses words as character, integrity, deeply regretful, things like that. But one thing that he does make mention of is that they're going to be putting football first. There's nothing wrong with putting football first. I think that's that's huge. But you need to be able to to make sure publicly, I mean, in a position like this publicly, that you know you did something wrong, that you know that there has to be measures that are taken to do better. Mm-hmm. And I think you're going to get people, and, and quite honestly, I, I think it would be odd if you didn't have a lot of people Wondering, okay, this Jim Grope guy is here. He's keeping the whole staff. I well, think you're going to get a lot of people to question, why would you do that if you want to completely get off to a fresh start? Most people would say that doesn't seem too fresh. And the thing that doesn't sit right with me, because when I first heard that, oh, well, Grobe is going to keep the coaching staff, my first immediate thought was, okay, well, do I agree with it? No, but... Part of me is like, okay, well, I kind of get it because you're coming into a new situation and in order to be successful because he's an interim, which means he's not guaranteed the job after this season. In order to win football games, you got to have some sort of 
consistency coach-wise, bringing in new coaches at this point would just be catastrophic. However, you go to read on in this article, and Chapman even says, and yet the bulk of the coaching staff, which wasn't exactly cleared of any wrongdoing in the Pepper Hamilton report, I see that and I go, okay, that changes everything. Get rid of all of them. You're not cleared of any wrongdoing, and you want to right the ship? Clean house. It don't matter. And if you're, at this point, it should not be about, like, I get what I'm saying is not the popular opinion. This shouldn't be about winning football games. This should be about fixing the problem at hand. And if your main focus coming into this situation is to win football games, well, guess what? You're just as bad as the last guy. Because that same mindset got us in this situation. Eventually, you're going to get back to winning football games. But the point here is to fix the fucking problem. And by keeping this coaching, I said it in our last podcast, the video podcast, you get rid of everybody. You just get rid of everybody because it's either that or the NCAA can come down and say, you know what, fuck it, death penalty. You know, again... Uh, I think there, there's two things I want to get to in what you just said. The first one being is that I know that one thing that I said the last time that we had a podcast was that, I mean, who's to say that some of these coaches didn't come forward and say, Art, hey, we've got some problems going on here, man. We mm-hmm. have got to deal with this. And, and, and Bryles go, yeah, 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 we'll deal with it. We will. Yeah, we'll get to it. You know, but we've got this going on, this going on. We'll get to it. We'll, it'll be fine. And then you just kind of, t- and then Bryles just kind of tables it. And then the coaches, I mean, the other assistant coaches, I mean, they don't really have then a whole lot of pull. You know, Bryles is the guy. He's the coach or was. You know, and maybe that's what Grobe's kind of saying is that, you know, he trusts the process. These coaches are going to coach football. And that's just, that's all they want to do. They want to coach football. They don't want to be in the limelight. They don't want to have to worry about whether their job is on the line or not. Just, okay, you know, I trust the process. I'm keeping them. I am keeping them because I know that they can do their job, and their job is to coach football, and they're good at that. And that may be one thing that Grobe is trying to do. The second thing is you talk about death penalty again, and I just, you know, I've listened to a lot of places. I've I've watched Mm -hmm. um, Marcillo and Cannell. Uh, Death penalty just is, it's too much for me. It's too much for me, and I don't well, think I don't think that's going to happen. In order I, I just to, don't I just don't think that the death penalty is something that n- is going to come down in this situation because I don't think I, I in all honesty I don't know if it warrants it. I mean, well, I just want to bring even I want to bring this State up. Got it, and they I think were worse than this. I want to bring this up because this is what I heard on um, the herd. Last week, and I'm going to leave this clip That's what down. you heard on the herd? Punny. Punny. Very punny from Cow and Cow Herd. But what he said last week, and I will leave this video down in the description for you guys to see it, is he said on his radio show, this is what the death penalty was made for. It wasn't made for, oh, a guy like Reggie Bush got some extra money f- to help his mom. Oh, you gave a college kid an extra meal to make sure that. He was fed that night. No, this is what the death penalty was made for because it was an injustice against other human beings. We've talked about that. We know our two opinions. I am totally for giving them the death penalty. You say it doesn't warrant it. But just getting back to Jim Grobe and this coaching well, staff. Really, really quickly, I, I don't I, we're, I don't want to move, move on yet. What then there needs to be more I don't want to make this sound bad because I am more than most people mm-hmm. am looking out for the interest of others mm-hmm. and you know and if anyone's wrong I think that's wrong and I, I, I think that the severity of the situation it's very severe it's a very severe situation it's very it's terrible it's absolutely terrible what has happened but the death penalty you know I think that it's difficult because what does it, you know, when does it warrant? When does something warrant the death penalty? There needs this. to be. That's th- what I say, but, this. But, but there needs to be, it needs to be more. It is not clear. It is not clear. The there way, needs to be some rules and some guidelines. Listen to me before you're no, thinking about what you're going to say next. No, I know what I'm going to say. and help me 
trying to find what is going to warrant the death penalty. You know, oh, this situation, this would. No, well, and then to this me, one might. okay. You know what? What were? I'm going to help be the, you what's out. What's the criteria? I'm going to help you out. For me, and this is just me as a person. When I say this situation warrants the death penalty, if you are going to have a football program that foster, I'm going to use the words fosters is okay with. Um, what's some other fancy words that I could use here? Um, let's this kind of behavior kind of run rampant and eh, it's okay. We don't have to keep it in check. When you have this kind of a culture and you're okay with it, then you get the death penalty. That is to me what warrants the death penalty. If you are going to have a football program that warrants a culture similar to this, and you could use that in, it could be with what's going on here. It could be a totally different situation than the rape part of it, the culture. If the culture's the same and it's this dark, death penalty. For Penn State, some horrible things went on at Penn State. Some terrible things. We all know it. Not even they got it. Here's the thing I'm going to say about Penn State. It was terrible. It is. Here's the big difference between this and Penn State. By the time we got to Penn State, Sandusky was gone. Joe Paterno was gone. Most of the people involved in the cover-up were gone. That's a situation where I looked at it and I went, should have got to this 10 years ago, 20 years ago. If we would have got to it sooner, death penalty on the spot. This one, everybody is still there. And the thing that kind of bugs me the most Not only does this coaching staff get to stay on scotch-free, it's basically Art Bryles is a scapegoat. That's what they're saying because the coaching staff is still there. The chancellor may not be the chancellor, but he's still fucking teaching law at Baylor. What the fuck is this shit? If you're going to step down as chancellor, you should be gone from the school because you fostered and you're okay with this kind of a culture. Yeah, I'm that's sh- the problem I have. I'm sure he's teaching his ethics class. In well, the and fall. that's the thing. It's like you're gonna teach law and then be involved with this. It's fucking hypocritical. It's it, it's actually pathetic. That I, too. I, I think I think that. But the number one thing, and the number one thing that I'd like to look out for in in this instance. When we, you know, some people get so, oh, death penalty. Like you, Ricky, I really think, you know, you come, you kind of come down, death, mm-hmm. give, death penalty, death penalty. What about the, what about the student athletes that weren't involved? What about the student athletes that weren't involved? What about them, you know? They, 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 they're not just going to school at Baylor to be a student athlete and, you know, go out there and fight with their teammates every Saturday and not really go towards anything. I mean, just imagine and if here, for, you know, however many years you couldn't, you were going out there to compete, but for what? For what? Didn't even matter if you won your conference. For what? Why don't you just go after the ones actually involved, the players involved, the coaches? You say, okay, you know what? We may lose some recruits mm-hmm. because we get rid of this coach and they were – they were with this coach. That's who was going to be their coach. That's why they were going to come here. So we lose a couple because of that. But we keep the rest of them intact. And that we and we say, you know what? We have we have gotten rid of the problem. You are you guys are not the problem. You are what's keeping us going because you are going out there and you're fighting, you're grinding every day to make it to Saturday, yeah. to make it to a playoff. To make us look good and bring in money for us. That's where this school is getting most of their money anyways. Athletics and the football program. And here's the thing. We're not going to get it. I'm not saying like we're going to get a death penalty right off the bat. Because any decision cannot be made too too rash. I mean, there's a process to this. We have to go through the investigation that I believe is still ongoing. But as soon as that investigation finds out this play, like it, as soon as it's like you were involved, you weren't, you were involved, you weren't. The way I would say it is if you were giving the school the death penalty, like this is after the investigation has gone on. If it's like, okay, we're giving the school the death penalty. 
if you were a student athlete that had nothing to do with this and you are scotch free, you get a chance to transfer anywhere you want. You get a free pass to anywhere else you want to continue your college career and have the same opportunity that you would have had here. I'm sorry that these other assholes ruined your time to finish this at Baylor, but I am letting you in. It would be they wouldn't have to wait a year, no transfer rule. It would be, in my world, you get to go to whatever school you want to transfer to, barring that that school. It would basically be like you're an open recruit again. It would basically and you can be, be recruited. A, 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 basically a disbanding of that yeah, school. No, it would be. Or of that program, rather. Not the school, the program, And rather. is that the, like, and that's the thing with the death penalty. But that's that's what, what it's going to do. But I agree with you. That's what should happen. You should be able to do that. You should be mm-hmm. afforded that option because it makes no sense to to punish everybody. I am not one of the oh this person did it, but let's punish everyone just to you no, know, teach them all. No, if you had nothing to do crap. with it, you should so be able to you, transfer wherever you, you want. You should be able to give get that liberty to yeah. do that. I I. I these things are tough. Let me tell you. I mean, if and if it's if it's tough for the people who talk about it, and there's multiple people mm-hmm. who have talked about it, who will talk about it. It's an issue. It's a, it's a deeper issue. We talked about that deep issue last week for sure. I think that. Gosh, I just I I think that it's hard. I mean, you can't even imagine then really what what the NCAA you know ponders about and what they go over and how much back and forth they go over because i you know the NCAA does not want to see any program have to get the death penalty i don't really think they they want that they i i don't think that um i i think that at the end of the day they they want these programs to be great because at the end of the day who is it about it's about honestly really it's about these college athletes and stuff like that but also, who is it about at the top? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's about your donors, and it's about your board of trustee members, because if they're not happy, guess what? They might take their money elsewhere. And, and guess I, what? Then you're screwed. And if I'm a donor or a board of trustee member, and first off, if I knew this was going on, shame on you. You're a fucking terrible human being, and you deserve to be right in this with everybody else on a punishment. If you didn't know about this, cut the cord. Fuck it. You're not getting my money. But I've said that in our last podcast. I want to kind of circle the wagons back to what we originally came on because we kind of got on the death penalty topic. I want to bring it back to. But I think it was a good. I think, a good I think it was a good it thing is. to get on because I I I, re- I really do. You can't escape it. You can't you escape can't. it. But I think it's also like I said. That's why I really wanted to kind of bring up and talk out what constitutes getting the death penalty mm-hmm. or not because I feel like sometimes some people are too quick to say absolutely this deserves the death penalty. But at the at the same time, I think people on the other side sometimes are too quick to say nah. No, they're not, they don't need it. That doesn't constitute it. That doesn't warrant it. And what I want to kind of circle back to is in the article, this is the um, Brandon Chapman article, it says in here, and I quote, on multiple occasions in the Pepper Hamilton reports, findings of fact, the report referred to football coaches and staff when highlighting the failings of the football program. Yet Art Bryles is the only member of the coaching staff to be punished. The school has not released names of every person who has been removed due to findings. Thus, a cloud looms over the remaining members of the coaching staff. If that's in the report and it says football coaches and staff, it just brings me back to our first issue. Why are there not being changes made? And the reason why, and I'll answer my own question, is because no matter what happens, no matter what anybody says, you can throw around these words of, character and integrity and regret but in the bottom line nothing is going to change all Baylor cares about is winning football games that's all they care about and I hope that's not true I hope there's real change going on behind the scenes however that's what it seems like to me and at the best best case scenario well the perfect scenario would be the coach the Clear house, get a new coaching staff in the door right now. But if that coaching staff stays, then your best scenario is that Grobe is just saying, hey, you know what? 
I can't come in here and clear house because that would totally derail this season and it wouldn't be fair to these players. I expect if Jim Grubbs is the man I want him to be at the end of the season, he will just start kicking people out the door. Now that the season's over, you're gone, you're gone, you're gone, you're gone, you're gone, you're gone. It's like right down the line, unless they were gone through the season after the investigation. So there's another little piece on ESPN.com, and it talks about a group of supporters who thanked Ken Starr in a newspaper ad. Fucking ridiculous. And they thanked him for a variety of things, including his, quote, exceptional care for students and their well-being, end quote. So then it goes down a little bit farther. And the group of of supporters thanks Star for Mm -hmm. the following. Please read. Please. For your integrity, leadership, character, and humble nature. For your exceptional care for students and their well-being. For your intellect and recruitment of distinguished faculty. For elevating Baylor University to new heights in academic excellence, sports, research, innovation, and service. We're grateful, end quote, the we're grateful, all caps. This isn't a video podcast. Could you let everyone know what I'm doing right now? It looks to be uh, Ricky is pretending to uh, jerk something off. Doing a jerk off motion because this is bullshit. Like the reason, like, and oh, this brings me up. I want to, I'm going to bring up something that me and you, I just show you before this podcast that I saw earlier in the day. I don't know if Ken Starr is stupid or if he knows what's going on in his head because if you haven't, you got to go on ESPN. You got to find the video of where um, Kent Starr basically, he was asked about the emails that he received, basically says, yeah, I might have received those, but I don't remember. Basically saying, yeah, I received them. Then his advisor says, wait, I have to talk to you, brings him into a different part of the house, brings him out of that room, says, okay, we got to re-record this segment. I don't want anything misedited. She asks, the reporter asks the question again. He says, no, I did not receive any emails. And he immediately turns to his advisor and says, is that good? Or just looks at her. And she's like, don't look at me, look at her. I don't, like, I see that and I go, okay, is this guy, like, as evil as we think he is? Or is he just a fucking idiot? I'm thinking it's the latter. He doesn't know what the fuck's going on in his own head. And that's what I think, like, like how are you that much of an idiot? during? And that whole thing looks bad. Do you think that news company wasn't going to release that? Because if you didn't, you're a fucking idiot. You know... Ricky, you've been you've been kind of talking in this in this segment so far about you really think Grobe should get if he if he wants to be a good guy and try and portray himself as this good guy, uh, he should get rid of the entire coaching staff and really start fresh. Well, Baylor well, needs to get rid of Star. Well, what happens is that at the end of the day, leadership starts at the top, and I think that if there was a leader who Baylor could count on that came in and they really wanted to start fresh. I think they themselves would probably and most likely get rid of the entire coaching staff. Say, Grobe, I'm handing you the keys now, at least temporarily. You're going to have to try and find other people who want to make this fresh start with you. And they are unfortunately not members mm-hmm. of our staff. I'm not saying that that's necessarily something I would do because I don't know those gentlemen. I do not know their character. You'd like to think that it's good and that Bryles was the only one. Unfortunately, though, uh, Ken Starr uh, is another one that he, at least a group of alumni and friends from Baylor uh, are supporting him outwardly for sure. You like to think that the guy is good, Mm -hmm. but when the video that you and I watched, what you were just describing just moments ago, it showed that he was copied on this email from this girl saying how she was raped. That's what the subject said. I was raped at Baylor. He was clearly on it, unless 
that's a different Ken Starr working at the university. I'm going to doubt that one. The thing is, you if you want things to be run well, anything, corporation, mm-hmm. uh, higher ed, anything, your leadership has to be top notch, and it's got to start from the top. Because guess what? There's a lot of leaders towards the bottom. Mm-hmm. They just haven't had the opportunity yet to be at the top. But let me tell you, one day they will. But there are a lot of people at the top who are supposed to be leaders who should be nowhere near that role. And this Baylor situation is nowhere near the end of its conclusion. It is going to drag on all summer. And I'll tell you this, it's going to drag on all football season. I would not be surprised if once we, like, after this, I wouldn't be surprised if it's like, okay, unless something big happens, we talk about it here and there. I'm telling you, once we hit the football season... I would not be surprised if every single week there is a Baylor-related thing for us to talk about because this is going to be a season. It's going to go on all season. That's what I think. And I want to ask you two questions to kind of wrap this whole thing up. Number one, I want you to put yourself in the mindset and in the shoes of Jim Grope. Why would you even take this job? Because to me... I would need. I would be like, "Fuck that! I don't even want it." Nope, nope, not not touching that with a twenty foot pole. Well, there's a lot of people out there. There's two, you know. There's there there's a couple types of people, and there's a one type of people that, you know, they they don't that that they don't want to they want to take on challenges, but they look at things that oh that's that's not a challenge that I want to take on. You know, I pick and choose my battles. But then you have people who, these are the types of things they want to do. The, not to say that this is what they live for, but they want this type of challenge because they believe that they can bring a good culture. They can bring a culture where all the things that we talked about earlier, integrity, character, they can do that. They want to be the guy or, or the girl or the woman to bring that to whatever it may be. And right now it seems like Jim Grove wants to be that guy who brings a completely new, revitalized, and fresh culture to Baylor football. And if you're sitting there going, well, who is, like, you guys have been talking about Grobe. Who is he? He hasn't coached since 2013. That was his, when he got fired from Wake Forest. But the last thing I wanted to ask you, the second question, was do you think he'll be able to write the ship? Can Jim Grobe write the ship at Baylor? If they give him the opportunities to, but if he if there co- if there are more things that come out that other things happened this that and the other thing and there's too many distractions sometimes it's hard to write the ship when there's too many distractions because then there's the your players are distracted and people are distracted on other things and it just doesn't go well so they need to be able to allow him the opportunity to write it because it's one thing to say here you go get it done. But it's another thing to go, okay, here, we're going to help you along the way to get it done. I think they, if they do that, if they help them along the way and they, mm-hmm. there, are no any other, there are no other distractions, this is the biggest one, you would like to think, uh, that, the, that the worst is behind you. And that's what Grobe, I'm sure, is assuming. If it is, yeah, I think he probably can write the ship. I won't say in a year, though. I, I don't know if he does I'm it just in a year, in but general, I think I, he, I think he can do it. I think he can do it. If he's got this mindset and if he sticks to these buzzwords that he's used, yeah, I think he can do it. But if there's any other distractions, no one will be able to do it, no matter who you put there. Well, that's going to wrap up this part of the podcast. I want you guys to go down below, comment section, let us know what you guys think about all of this, anything that we've talked with the – Baylor discussion. Do you think that Jim Grobe can write the ship for the Baylor Bears? 